We are looking into the Constitution Act of Canada, 1867, Article 91, where it states the following. It shall be lawful for the Queen, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate and House of Commons, to make laws for the peace, order, and good government of Canada. Now we further scroll down and we see in Section 6 that it was lawful for the Queen to make laws in Canada concerning the census and statistics. So here is where the obligation or the legal right for Canada to create the census came to pass. We saw in the Constitution Act of Canada 1867, Article 91, Subsection 6, that it was lawful for the Queen to make laws concerning census and statistics. Now we look at the statutory power in Canada, the federal enactment, that is titled or enumerated Statistics Act. And this is the uh, statutory power that was created based off of the Constitution Act in order to provide the duties and the powers for the government of Canada to collect the information that they are looking for. When you look in the interpretation section, it says the chief statistician means the chief statistician of Canada. Now watch, he's appointed under subsection 4.1. So the minute we see the word appointed, we understand that this individual here is automatically operating as an officer in an office of Canada. If you go into the Income Tax Act of Canada, you find that any position that is appointed to in the position of employment automatically deems it or makes it a role of an officer or office of Canada. So here we understand that and it goes on to say that the minister means such member of the Queen's Privy Council for Canada as is designated by the governor in council as the minister for the purpose of this act. So the, the governor in council places a minister over this act. He's appointed as the minister over this act and it's his duties to enforce this act. So the government sends you a form, a census form, and they say to you, or they inform you that it's an obligation that you fill this out. And they say, you have to do this. Now, when you read the form that they send, you find the following statement. It says, what is the census? The census provides a statistical portrait of the country and its people. In Canada, it is mandatory for all residents to participate in the census. So this is the legal ground. This is the legal position that this government body, this government office is taking with you. They are saying in Canada, it is mandatory for all residents to participate in the census. Most individuals would read this statement and take it as the following. In the geographical area or the geographical landmass, better known as Canada, it is mandatory for all those who live in that geographical landmass to participate in the census. They would take the word resident to mean living in a geographical area called Canada. But that is not what it is stating at all. Here, what it is stating, it is saying that in Canada, in the body corporate, in the corporate body, it is mandatory for all who are doing business or who are resident in this body corporate to participate in the census. So what it's stating is if you are an officer of Canada operating as in an office of Canada, then it is mandatory for you to participate. And if you don't, then they will put legal problems upon you. So when they send you that census form, there's a cover letter that is sent also. And on the cover letter, it says Statistics Canada will contact your household by phone or in person. If you have not completed and returned your census questionnaire by May 31st, 2016, if you refuse to complete a census questionnaire, information to that effect may be referred to the Public Prosecution Service of Canada for further action. So you see, they threaten you and they say this form here, you fill it out. If you don't fill it out, we're going to call you and we're going to force you to fill it out. And if you refuse to comply, then we're going to send you to the Public Prosecution Service of Canada for further action against you. So the legal ground that they are bringing forth against an individual human being or man or woman when they send you those documents is the following. In 
Canada, it is mandatory for all residents to participate in the census. In the Constitution Act of 1867, Article 91, Section 6, this is where the government is claiming the right to create and demand that a census be filled out. Now we have to figure out what Canada are they talking about? Are they talking about the land mass or are they talking about a government body, which is a federal juristic unit, which is a body corporate? Let us look into the Constitution Act of Canada, Article 91 first, where it says, it shall be lawful for the Queen, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate and House of Commons, to make laws for the peace, order and good government of Canada. Now, how many of us really understand what is being declared in this simple statement, good government of Canada? What exactly is a government? Well, a government is simply the structure of principles and rules determining how a state or organization is regulated. An organization through which a body of people exercise political authority. The machinery by which sovereign power is expressed. That is what you refer to when you use the term government. It simply means a ruling body of individuals. When we use the term government, we are simply referring to a structure of rules and principles that a body of people exercise authority. A government is a group of individuals who are exercising controlling power, governing body, government, a group of especially corporate, corporate officers or persons having ultimate control. The board of directors is a governing body of XYZ Incorporated. So a government is simply a body of people exercising power and authority. And the government is expressing sovereign power or the sovereign's power. We are seeing that a government is nothing more than a group of individuals exercising ultimate control, exercising power over how a state or organization is regulated. The following question then arises. What type of power is being expressed by the government in Canada? And why would I have to listen to or submit to this power? To find the answer to this question, we have to find first out what exactly Canada refers to or designates in the statement that we read before in Article 91 of the Constitution Act, where it states it shall be lawful for the Queen by and with the advice and consent of the Senate and House of Commons to make laws for the peace, order and good government of Canada. We look to the Supreme Court of Canada concerning what this designation means, Government of Canada, to find out the definition of what is being referred to when we say Government of Canada or Canada. When we look into the Constitution Act of 1867 under Article 91, when we look and see the word Canada, it's referring to a federal juristic unit. Supreme Court has declared this. The word Canada in Section 91.1 does not refer to Canada as a geographical unit, but refers to the juristic federal unit. Now, a juristic person, when you look in the dictionary, it says, go see what artificial person means. And then again, person, it says a juristic person, see artificial person. And an artificial person in law is an entity such as a corporation. So it's not clear. We know that so far, the word juristic federal unit Canada, it means it's an artificial person and it's an entity such as a corporation created by law and given certain legal rights and duties of a human being. It's a being, real or imaginary, who for the purpose of legal reasoning is treated more or less as a human being. Okay, so what we draw from this understanding is that Canada, the government of Canada, is considered an artificial person in law. Now, it can either be an entity or it can be a corporation. Now we have to look a little bit deeper to find out, is Canada being referred to here as a corporate body? Is it really a corporate body? The Canada being spoken about and brought forth in the Constitution Act of 1867 in Article 91 is an artificial person. 
and is a corporate body. We, as inhabitants, are being incorporated into this corporation. Since we can clearly see that Canada is a corporate body, we should be able to find subsequent evidence to this fact when Canada and its controlling powers are mentioned within the domestic laws. So we saw that it is stated by the Supreme Court that the word Canada refers to a juristic federal unit. And we saw that a juristic federal unit means an artificial person in law. However, it didn't seal the deal. It didn't say it's automatically a corporation because it could be an entity and they gave a, a definition saying such as a corporation. It didn't say only a corporation. So what we learned is that Canada, when you say the word Canada, you're referring to an artificial entity, an artificial person in law. Now we're going to see what type of powers are in operation in this artificial person. And that's going to describe to us and show us exactly what type of artificial person it is. So when you look into the Constitution Act of Canada, 1867, Article 9, you find the following statement. It says the executive government and authority of and over Canada is hereby declared to continue and be vested in the Queen. So now we see what type of powers are in oper operation. It's executive powers. And it is executive powers that are that are that have the authority over the artificial person, Canada. In the Constitution Act of 1867, Article 10, it says the provisions of this Act referring to the Governor-General, extend and apply to the Governor-General for the time being of Canada, that artificial person, or other, the Chief Executive Officer or Administrator for the time being, carrying on the Government of Canada on behalf and in the name of the Queen by whatever title he is designated. So we see that the Governor-General, the position that he's appointed to, is chief executive officer. That's the power in operation in Canada. He's the chief executive officer. When you look at the definition of what a chief executive officer is, it's a corporation's highest ranking administrator who manages the firm day by day and reports to the board of directors. So then when we walk this backwards, we see and understand what's going on. The powers that are in operation in the artificial person Canada are executive and corporate in nature. Therefore, the Canada, the artificial person being described, is a corporate body in nature. We just saw that the Supreme Court declared that Canada is a corporate body. And when we look to the type of power in operation, we find that it is corporate powers. Canada is a corporate body. The Queen has executive power. The executive powers are passed to the Governor General and he becomes a Chief Executive Officer of the corporate body called Canada. Executive powers bring forth corporate in nature. Now when you, when you look into the enactment which governs and controls the Governor General, that Chief Executive Officer, we find that the executive powers that he is operating on behalf of the Queen are flowing through the fact that this corporate body is a corporation soul, that Canada is a corporation soul. Office of the Governor General, the Governor General of Canada or other Chief Executive Officer or Administrator carrying on the Government of Canada on behalf and in the name of the Sovereign by whether, whatever title designated is a corporation soul. Canada, Federal Juristic Unit, the Governor General is a Chief Executive Officer of this corporation soul. The corporation soul is called Canada, and the powers being exercised are executive powers. Now, the Governor General is the Chief Executive of Canada, and he controls what transpires in this corporation on behalf of Her Majesty. He also shares this power with the Lieutenant Governors of the province. Constitution Act 1867, Article 14. It shall be lawful for the Queen, if Her Majesty thinks fit,
to authorize the Governor General from time to time to appoint any person or any persons jointly or severally to be his deputy or deputies within any part or parts of Canada, and in that capacity to exercise during the pleasure of the Governor General, meaning no set time frame, such as the powers, authorities, and functions of the Governor General, as the Governor General deems it necessary or expedient to assign to him or them. We have Canada, that's an artificial entity in law, that we now know is a corporate body. It's a body corporate when you use the word Canada. And the powers being exercised in the body corporate are executive. When we come back to 1867 Constitution Act, Article 91, where it's lawful for the Queen to make laws for the peace, order, and good government of Canada, they're talking about the body corporate. And they go in in Section 6, where it says that the government is claiming the right to create and demand that the census be filled out. Article 91, subsection 6. It's in that body corporate that this operation of law is transpiring. The Canada being spoken about is a body corporate, it executive powers being operated, and they said in section 6, in this body corporate, the officers, the ones who are resident in this body corporate, must fill out the census. Remember, it said that it, in Canada, it is mandatory for all residents to participate in the census. So look at what that's saying. In the body corporate, in the corporate body Canada, it is mandatory for all residents, those doing business in Canada, those operating in offices as officers of Canada must participate in the census. In the Statistics Canada enactment, Article 19.1, it says a census of the population of Canada shall be taken by Statistics Canada in the month of June in the year 1971 and every fifth year thereafter in the month to be fixed by the Governor in Council. So this is coming out of the Constitution Act of Canada, 1867, Article 91, where it says in Canada, in the body corporate, they're allowed to do a census. Now here they create the enactment and they say a census of the population of Canada. What Canada are they talking about here? They're talking about the body corporate. Now in the enactment, in their statutory power, in Article 3, it says there shall continue to be a statistics bureau under the minister, the one operating executive powers, to be known as a Statistics Canada the duties of which are to collect, compile, analyze, abstract, and public statistical information relating to the commercial, industrial, financial, social, economic, and general activities and condition of the people. They create a bureau within the body corporate of Canada, and they apply this enactment against the residents, the officers, operating in offices of Canada, the ones who are resident within the corporate body of Canada. Now they threaten you and they say, if you don't fill out this census, because it is in Canada, it is mandatory for all residents to do so, then we will perhaps take legal action against you. Now here in the enactment itself in Article 31, it says every person who, without lawful excuse, The provision is there. The proviso is there. The excuse, the qualification is already present. That's why they put that here. Every person who, without lawful excuse, refuses or neglects to answer or willfully answers falsely any question uh, requisite for obtaining any information sought in respect of the objects of this act or pertinent thereto that has been asked of him by any person employed or deemed to be employed under this act, or refuses or neglects to furnish any information, will, for the refusal or neglect, or false answer or deception, will be guilty of an offense and liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding $500, or to imprisonment for a term 
not exceeding three months or to both. So every person who refuses to give information under the census can have that happen to them. $500 fine or three months in jail or both. But every person who doesn't give the information with a lawful excuse then is protected. Well, what would your lawful excuse be in this particular situation? Are you forced to be considered resident in this Canada? Are you forced to take recognition as an officer operating in an office of Canada? Remember, they said the census provides a statistical portrait of the country and its people. In Canada, well, we know what Canada they're talking about now. They're talking about a federal juristic unit, an artificial person that is exercising executive powers, that has a chief executive officer at its head, that is therefore considered a body corporate, a corporate body, a corporation in law, and it is mandatory for all residents, those who are doing business in this body corporate, to participate in the census. Excuse me, I'm just living at home as a simple man or woman. My position would be that I'm not part of the body corporate of Canada. I am not a resident in Canada. You can't force me to be resident in Canada. If you try to do so, you violate my section 26 and section 7 constitutional rights of 1982. And further to that, you violate your obligations to the international covenants. Thompson Newspaper Limited versus Canada. While individuals, as a rule, have full legal capacity by the operation of law alone, artificial persons are creatures of the state and enjoy civil rights and powers only upon the approval of statutory authorities. The individual may stand upon his constitutional rights. He owes no duty to the state, since he receives nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life and property. His rights are such as existed by the law of the land long before the organization of the state and can only be taken from him by due process of law and in accordance with the Constitution. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass upon their rights.